So today's the day we're going to be taking a look at Island. Yeah, that one. So of course, with any new color, I do have the purple iPhone 14 Pro. I usually get the Pro Max, but you know what? After using the iPhone 13 mini and the compact design of the Galaxy Z Flip 4, I'm really starting to like smaller phones. And I'm, I am kind of bummed that Apple did not release the 14 mini. So we're, we only have the, the, the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Plus, iPhone 14 Pro, iPhone 14 Pro Max. What a lineup. I'm also super curious to see how the new eSIM works from this phone to this phone. So that's going to be kind of interesting. And since I switched between iPhone and Android a lot, I am super curious to see how exactly I'll be able to go from an eSIM to a physical SIM whenever I do switch to an Android device. That's kind of, I don't know why Apple did that, but you know, it's, it's Apple. So I'm not even going to question it because I don't think anyone knows. All right, let's check it out. Nice. So the purple, yeah, I mean, it looks kind of purple. They should have just called it kind of purple. They should, they should have did what Google does and put kind of in their color names because that kind of makes sense. But I mean, this is purple right here, kind of. <laughs> and this is like space black. At least, <laughs> at least that's what it looks like on my screen. <laughs> But yeah, man, those camera bumps, the new 40, uh, the 48 megapixel camera and the up, basically old cameras are upgraded. I mean, it looks, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a huge camera bump. Wow. I mean, if we compare the camera bumps to the 13, the iPhone 13 mini and this one, uh, the 14 pro, I mean, that is a huge difference. My God. So we do still get the 5G antenna, uh, the antenna cut out here, power, sleep, wake right there. On this side, this is where the uh, rest in peace uh, SIM card uh, slot used to be. And we don't really get that anymore. We just have a plus, uh, the volume up and down and the mute switch, the mute ringer switch right there. So let's go ahead and power this thing on. Uh, do I, do we, do we even need to know what's in the box? Of course not. Want to know why? Because there's nothing in here except the power cable. And you see that right there. So technically unboxing is done. Oh, that didn't. There we go. So let's go ahead and uh, get this thing powered up and I'll take you guys through the, the process of setting it up with the eSIM. Again, my physical SIM card is inside the mini. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how exactly this transfer process is going to take. And I think a lot of people are actually curious because this is the first time that Apple uh, completely ditched the SIM card slot. English, United States. All right, bring my, let me unlock my phone. All right, so right there, boom, automatically set up new iPhone, continue. All right, now I gotta do this little trick. All right, gotta scan the little whatever this is. God, man, that screen is bright. It's completely blowing, blowing out my camera. So here it says, uh, it may take a few minutes to activate your iPhone. Um, I'm guessing it's gonna transfer the number over uh, via my Apple ID. Uh, that's the only thing that actually makes sense. So I guess we're going to go ahead and find out. All right, now I got to do my uh, face. Let me scan my mug real quick. You guys see me? Yep. So position your face within the frame. And I got to do this, stretch my neck a little bit. There we go. And uh, no, I don't need to use a mask. So we're going to go ahead and skip that. And we see that little dynamic island. Look at that. Nah, that's pretty wild. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's hit continue, create a password. I don't want you guys seeing my password. Not that it matters because the chance of you finding my phone are very slim. Set up eSIM. So it automatically knows my number from my Apple ID. Again, I assume that's how it knows my number. So let me just hit the first option. And it says uh, transfer your SIM to this iPhone. Again, no physical SIM required. You just hit transfer number. Confirm a tra transfer on your other phone. So now you just got to go to your other phone and you got to confirm it. And you do that by uh, double clicking the, uh, the face ID button right there. And then it just says finish on new iPhone. So right now it's activating as you see on the bottom of the phone. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how long it's going to take to um, activate this eSIM. This is the first day that the iPhone 14 came out. So it's going to be interesting to see if the servers are flooded because uh, I can only imagine how many people right now are trying to activate their iPhones. So this is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, take a look at the time. It is 1015. 
So remember that number or yeah, remember that time. Wow. Okay. So it took about a minute. Uh, that's it. Cell, uh, cellular uh, setup is complete. So now it's waiting for my old iPhone to finish the backup. I guess uh, it didn't do that automatically. So I guess we have three minutes left, which is perfect enough to talk about the cases. So these cases are from a company called Totally. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you guys. So they do, they do have this nice little clear case. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a TPU style case. So let's go ahead and try it on. And this is how it looks like. So now you got a really raised up camera bump to protect that new 48 megapixel camera along with the other cameras. Very thin. Oh, I think it's done. Or is it done? Let me check. Nope, still doing it. All the cutouts are perfectly aligned. Everything is good. Nice clear case so you can still see that new purple-ish, black-ish color. And we also have this type of case, which is super, super thin. Can you guys even see how thin that, that edge is right there? So yeah, when they when they told me that they they make the thinnest cases, uh, I didn't really believe them until just now. You can't even tell there's a case on it. That's insane. And you know what? I actually really like this case. Wow. You can't even tell the case is on it. That's pretty wild. And again, you do get the whole cutouts perfectly aligned. Everything is good. The volume rockers um, and the volume up and down and the, the silent switch is opened as well as the power button is also open. So very, very, uh, very easy access. Lock it, unlock it. Perfect. And we can see that dynamic island in action. Let me try that again. Boom. But we also have th uh, this type of color and we also got this type of color. So they got all the colors you want. And as well, again, as that uh, that TPU style case, if you guys want, which is a little bit thicker than uh, these cases. But, you know, it's see through and it's got a nice little rubber texture on it. All right. So the iPhone setup is finally complete. It did take a little bit longer, um, give or take. But believe it or not, the phone is actually on. That's the always on display. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> I was honestly, I was more excited about the cameras, but that's how the always on display looks like. So that's just constantly on. I mean, it's pretty cool because, you know, you still get the colors of the background. And then the second you lift it, let's see how quick face ID reacts. Yeah, instant. And then you just swipe up and the phone is good to go. So, uh, yep, let's do that. So again, always on display. Let's see it transfer from the home screen to the always on display. So it's a nice little smooth uh, action. Now, the cool part is if you're wearing an Apple Watch, which I'm not because not really a fan, but if you are wearing an Apple Watch and you move further away from the iPhone, the iPhone will know that you moved away from because of the Apple Watch and it will actually turn off the always on display. And then when you come in close proximity again to the um, to the iPhone, the always on display will go ahead and turn back on. So that's actually a really neat feature and I'm surprised uh, no one else does it, at least not that I know of. I've never heard that before, but here we go. Oh, so the, the, the little island action actually goes with the ringer as well. So anytime you change the volume, it actually changes up there instead of having that little slider right there. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's funny how Apple is, you know, they went from trying to hide the notch on, you know, on iPhones like this. And now they're kind of making people like be like, oh, look, you got this thing right there. So I guess they're not really ashamed of it this year because uh, obviously of that software integration. I think it looks kind of sweet. So right now I am playing a song. Let me go ahead and swipe up. And we do get that song playing right there on the dynamic island. And it's actually really cool because you can actually see the album artwork on the very top left of, or actually the, the left side of that uh, of that dynamic island. Now here's where Apple kind of messed up a little bit, because if you want to get to the actual widget, you have to press and hold to get to the widget. You know, I would much rather have just a quick tap to get to the widget instead of a press and hold. But if you do tap it, it actually opens up into the application itself. So I think that's a little backwards. It would have been a lot better if they did that same exact thing, but well backwards. And another thing that I, I, it, it's kind of funny, but you know, here, it, you know, you can clearly see that this is for one handed use, you know, on the lock screen, if you want to change the song, boom, you do that, you change the song, you go back, boom. So it's all where your thumb is, right? But with the dynamic island, since it's so far up, that kind of, let me unlock my phone. 
that kind of makes it the opposite of one-handed use because now, I mean, this is a 14 Pro, so this isn't too, too bad, but you still have to kind of, I mean, I can't even reach it holding the phone normally. I have to really take my pinky off from the bottom and then kind of do this and then tap on it. You know what I mean? So they kind of went from one-handed mode to now being either a two-handed mode where you use your other hand to reach up there, or you kind of have to risk dropping your phone and doing it this way. So it, it, it's, it, it, makes me, it makes me think like the Dynamic Island was an afterthought to the actual hardware. I don't know, what do you guys think about the always-on display? Do you think it's a little distracting? I mean, I don't, I don't think so, it's not that bright. But I do like that the, that the time and all the important inf information are kind of nice and not too bright, but you can clearly see them um, on top of the actual wallpaper, as well as what song you're listening to if you're listening to a song. So that's kind of basically just as bright as the time. So once you tap on it, then it kind of all comes, uh, comes up to life. I think it's kind of cool, you know, especially because I have my phone, uh, have my phone propped up on a MagSafe stand like this when I'm on the computer, working on the computer. So to have it be in its always on state and still see notifications, st the song playing, the time, the date, I think it's a nice little addition. But what do you guys think? And again, I will have the cases linked down below for you guys that want it. I'm telling you guys, if you want a really thin case that doesn't really have drop protection, but it's really meant to uh, you know, to not have the stainless steel on the side scratch, because we've all know how easy this is to scratch. I mean, almost day one or maybe two days tops, you're gonna start seeing some scuff marks on that incredibly shiny um, side of the phone. So that's where these come in, and these are super thin, I mean, as you guys saw. I mean, look, this is without the case, and this is with the case, I, I mean, it, you don't you don't even notice that it's there. So I'm gonna have these linked down below for, for those of you that want them. So that's it guys, that is the iPhone 14 Pro in the deep purple uh, color, I think that's what it's called. Um, anyway, that's the new dynamic island, the always on display, and that new 48 megapixel camera. I'm gonna go ahead and put up some camera samples right now, just super quick, uh, because I will be doing a full in-depth uh, review of the camera, which is coming out soon. So if you guys want, definitely subscribe if you haven't already, so you'll know when that video goes live. And if you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to let me know down below. And that's it. This was Mark from Markstack. Adios.